Hey everybody, it's Dina Rico with the Creativity Cave and look at this gorgeous card that I created. I'm pretty excited about it and I really can't wait to show you how to make it. So, and of course I've got some tips and tricks along the way. So, and then I've got a matching tag. Um, what I want to start with is I've got my card base. It is Bermuda Bay. And so I'll just go ahead and fold that in half. And then I also have a piece of Knight of Navy cardstock that I'm going to stamp the breathtaking back, uh, floral background on. And this background stamp is so pretty. Breathtaking, breathtaking is probably a really good description of it. So to do that, I'm actually going to pull in my Stamparatus because um, I find it's really easy. Oops to do that uh, background stamping with a Stamparatus versus without. And let me explain why. So first of all, when I was setting this up in my Stamparatus, I um, put the background stamp kind of in the corner here. You can see I literally lined it up with the edge of my plate. And then what I did is I positioned my cardstock on here and then I closed the lid and that allowed me to position post-it notes for um, placement. And what's great about this is if you make more than one of these, you can just keep putting your cardstock in, okay? So, now here's another little tip. When you're inking up your Stamparatus, put an ink pad or a stamp case um, underneath, and then that makes it nice and level so you can ink it up easier. That's just a little tip. It's really helpful on a big stamp like this. Um, it's less critical on a smaller image. Okay, so I've got my cardstock kind of in my little um, post-it jig, and I've got my stamp inked up. So I'll close that down and give it a good press. Okay. I'm probably being a little aggressive here, but I just love the stamp so much. And then when you take it off, da, da, da. so pretty. Okay. So there we go. I'll set this aside. I'm just going to take this out and set it like that so as to not get ink on everything. I mean, I'll probably get ink on some things, but just not everything. Okay. <laughs> now, I also have a piece of Whisper White um, that is going to go on the inside of my card. So I'll set that aside for the moment. And then I'm going to take up, I just have a scrap piece of some Fluid 100 watercolor paper. This is very, very important if you want to get good results. So I'm going to put down my Embossing Buddy little thing. This is just filled with powder. I've had this for years. It lasts forever. I shouldn't say forever. I mean, I've been a demonstrator 20 years and I think I've had two of them, just so you know. All right, so I've got the powder on there and that helps prevent extra powder flecks from sticking where you don't want them to. Now I'm using the Happy Birthday to You stamp set with this gorgeous cake. And I liked this set, but I loved the set when our coordinating dies came out this month. You can cut those flowers out of the cake like they weren't even on a cake, which is pretty cool. And then of course you can cut the whole image out. There's a cake stand and then some little branchy pieces that you can use. All right, so I've inked that up in my Versamark ink and then I'm going to stamp that down on my scrap here. And I'm going to heat emboss it with some silver embossing powder. Now this is powder I've had for a very long time. I have probably 10 jars of powder in here, which I was a little aggressive back in the day. I wouldn't actually recommend doing this now. Gosh, I'm having trouble getting my thing open. But I, I wouldn't rec recommend getting 10 jars. One jar will be fine. Um, and the reason is because powder can actually kind of get old. This has stand, stood up, but my gold has not. Okay, so I just flicked the excess off, and then we're going to heat it to melt it. And I love the silver with the beautiful um, blue hues that I'm using, blue and aqua hues. I think it's just so pretty. So just heat this up.
Okay, so that looks good. Now we're gonna do some water coloring. So for that, I need my aqua painter. And aqua painters are just the best. It's uh, there's water in the in the tube. You can just go to town. Now I'm using three colors of ink today. I've got some soft sea foam ink. I've got some Bermuda Bay ink, and then I also have some Knight of Navy ink to all coordinate. And I'm just getting the water flowing through my aqua painter here. There we go. It's much better when there's just a little water going on. Okay, so I'm gonna start by coloring in my leaves. And there's a whole bunch of leaves on here, so you just wanna try and catch them all. And then we'll come back and color the different parts as well. I kind of like getting these done just because, you know, it's nice to start somewhere. <laughs> and then, well, and then the other reason is because we can, um, we can let the leaves dry and then we're going to color the centers of the big flowers. Okay, so that looks good. I will take and use my Bermuda Bay now. And for this, what I want to do is have some nice dark color kind of at the center of each petal. And then I will kind of blend it out towards the tip of each petal. So we've got dark areas and light areas on here. Now the beauty of watercolor is it can you can do like just about anything with it you don't have to be perfect you don't have to be professional but when you use the watercolor paper it makes a tremendous difference in the overall look that you're able to achieve it's really really helpful to have watercolor paper um, it will not work on regular white cardstock you can get away with whisper white or i'm sorry not whisper white, shimmer white but personally, I prefer watercolor paper. It's just so much better. It's, it's created to handle lots of water blending of color um, and, and being able to fix mistakes if you make them. So, so many reasons to love watercolor paper. It is a little more expensive, but you tend to not, you don't use it like you do like white. I don't make I've never made a card base with what with watercolor paper. So you use smaller pieces of it. So it, it goes a long way. Okay, so you can see I'm taking that dark area and just blending it out light. Sometimes you can get rid of the ink that's on your brush and then just have clear water to blend and then you get those nice light areas. Um, I'm not afraid to leave white spots on my flowers if necessary too that's okay and then you can just add more color in if if you want whatever whatever your heart desires you can do when watercoloring so that's kind of the fun of it but I really just like having that center nice and dark and then blending as needed okay so that looks pretty good Blend that just a little bit more up there so it's not so striking. Okay, now what I'm going to do is take and use some Knight of Navy. Now this ink is so pretty. We're going to use it for <clears throat> the little, little, I want to say balls. I don't know what these are. You know, the little branchy things right here whatever you call those and even put it up there in the little buds I was probably supposed to be turquoise but that's okay all right so that looks very nice and then we're going to kind of carry that look through by coloring um, the cake stand as well so I'm just going to use my watercolor brush to color my cake stand. Now I'm going to laugh for just a second. 
I colored the inside the darkest, and I think on this one I'm going to color the outsides the darkest, and then blend them to be lighter in the center. I think that'll look more lifelike, I guess, in shading. <laughs> And I think it does look better when it's dark on the edge. And then is light in the center. Okay, so I've got this beautiful, beautiful watercoloring. Now what I'm going to do is take and die cut this out. And I'll be right back. All right, so look at, that is so pretty. Now I also die cut a few little branches. I've got two of the leafy ones in soft sea foam and two of the branchy ones in Night of Navy, because I don't know what to call them, but uh, we'll use those on the inside of our card. Now let's put the outside together. So I've got that beautiful background that we stamped up a few minutes ago, and then I'll adhere it to my card base so pretty and this was three and three quarters by five and we're just we're gonna put it on straight just for you guys because I like you <laughs> all right so we've got that then I've got this strip of whisper white that I have that I want to stamp my sentiment on and I'll stamp that in night of navy the sentiment is right out of our stamp set which is awesome love when there's pretty words included and so I'm just going to stamp that kind of right here in the center I think this might be a little bigger than my card so we'll just trim that down and then I've got to you again also from our stamp set so I'll just stamp that in some Bermuda Bay ink on the side and then we're going to adhere this right to our card like this okay and like I said we'll trim those ends off here in just a moment and then I'm going to take and pop up my cake because it's just so pretty oh my gosh I love it So we'll put, I mean, this is a fancy card. We went to a lot of effort, so we're going to put a bunch of uh, dimensionals on here. I think the fancier the card, the more the dimensionals, right? <laughs> I like that idea. It's worthy of all of this dimensional use. That makes me think of the Seinfeld. I know I'm dating myself here a little, but do you guys remember the sponge-worthy episode of Seinfeld? Oh my gosh, that was so funny. Okay. So there we go. We've got that on there. So pretty. Now, the great thing is this is just so, the coloring is so pretty. There's not much you need to really do to embellish it. You could add some things to it if you wanted. I didn't do much just because I really liked how this turned out on its own. Now, on the inside of my card, I'm going to do a little stamping as well. Um, I'll take <coughs> excuse me, another strip of paper, and this time I'm going to stamp Celebrate. We'll just put that kind of right in the center here as well. And then above and below the Celebrate, I'm going to add these cute little um, leaves. So I'm going to put, actually a glue dot might work really well. I'm going to put a glue dot on this leaf and then tuck it on here kind of like that. That looks good. And then it over just a little bit same thing over here just under that leaf and then we'll tuck this one much the same like so and then we'll add our little branchy thing to this behind and it just adds like I said a nice little touch now, the great thing about, of course, this stamp set is it's a celebration set, so you can get it for free, and then you can also purchase those dies to go with it. I think they're just called birthday dies, and they're so pretty, and they really make kind of this set even better. 
and you have those dies. So you, I'll, I'll be making a video kind of showing how to use the flowers without the cake coming up soon. So watch my channel for that probably next week. All right, I'm going to adhere this to the inside of my card. And then you've just got a beauty. I also created a tag um, to coordinate, and it's just a two-inch strip of cardstock. I stamped that beautiful cake on there and then just colored in the flowers with some clear wink Estella and that's it so hope you loved these cards please shop my online store to get this stamp set for free and become a VIP rewards member I'd love to welcome you to my program all those details can be find, found on my blog and there's a link in the description of this video thanks for stamping with me today guys bye bye